spring is here and we couldn't be more excited about it here at Terra Drift because spring backpacking might be the best backpacking and we do love some early season backpacking gear. Think insulated sleeping pads, cozy but lightweight insulated jackets, and you know, lighter weight packs than we were carrying in the winter. So I hit the trail in Big Bend National Park this month with Stillhouse Whiskey to enjoy the season, of course, but also test some fresh new gear. So we're gonna talk about all of the gear we put to the test over this backpacking trip and why it's so great. So let's get into it, shall we? So after taking out all of this gear and putting it to the test, overall, I'm pretty impressed. Let's start with the big Agnes Sundog 45 liter, which weighs two pounds, 13 ounces, which could certainly be considered light, if not full on ultra light, while still being able to handle heavier loads, heavier than I'm gonna carry anyway. I think their max recommendation is 40 pounds, which is pretty dang heavy, really. But it does have an aluminum frame, so that helps. Anyway, I was obviously a huge fan of the Big Agnes Impassable Day Pack, so I was excited to test this out with all of its load stabilizers and lifters, and it did not disappoint. The straps felt good, the back panel was comfortable, but the pack is only available in one size, so if you're a larger than average human, it could potentially be a bit tricky since the harness is not fully adjustable so I'd recommend trying one on at a local retailer just in case uh, that said the men's version of this pack the prospector 50 liter is available in medium and large so that's definitely an option that said while I liked the hip belt pockets their spacious size and the fact that they're moderately repositionable the belt itself isn't quite small enough I realize that I'm a tiny human human and very much not average. And it does happen frequently that I have a hip belt cinched down as tight as it will go, but that doesn't mean I'm not just a little disappointed. I mean, for those of us on either side of the spectrum, large or small, hip belts can be a real issue when it comes to backpacks. So hopefully Big Agnes will offer some extended sizing in the future. Otherwise, the pack was comfortable even on day two and I dug all the pockets. Plus it comes with an ultralight trash can bag for collecting your trash or stuff you find on the trail. I mean, it's a moderately useful thing, I guess, and more reusable than a zip top, but not my favorite feature of this pack. Speaking of features, I did like the idea of a back panel that fully opens up like this, but honestly, I didn't use it when backpacking, uh, mostly because I forgot it was there. I did use it when I was traveling and wanted to get a jacket that I knew was packed down in the middle of the bag, just unzipped it, popped it open, and there it was. So it is useful useful for certain situations. But the other thing I didn't love about the bag was the lack of accessory straps for a sleeping pad. I didn't backpack with my Z-Rest this time, but if I had, there's really nowhere to lash it on the outside of the pack unless I bring my own straps or webbing. There are plenty of attachment points though, so I mean, that's great. I just miss these kinds of features when they're not built in. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely not a make or break type thing, just Good to think about if you're gonna buy a new pack. That said, I would totally backpack with the Sundog 45 again, no question. Just like I would absolutely backpack in the black diamond coefficient hoodie again. I loved the snug hood, the perfectly placed thumb holes, and that the interior is a soft power grid type fleece and the exterior a more robust and durable material, which means it can handle some scuffing and snagging and stand up to more rugged terrain. I mean. It is black diamond after all, makes sense for a climbing brand. The only thing I did miss from the jacket were hand pockets, but if you're wearing it with a pack or a harness, you wouldn't be able to get to them anyway. So again, not a deal breaker. It does have a chest pocket after all. Also this color. Am I right? I also wore my beloved Outdoor Research Echo hoodie the whole trip, which I've reviewed before and love for how light and thin it is, but also protective, you know, from the sun. My outer layer was the new-ish nine ounce Vario zip up jacket from Outdoor Vitals, which kept me cozy in the mornings and the evenings. I tested their similar Ventus pullover a summer or two ago, which is even more ultralight, but love the ease of a zip up. This one still has those same armpit vent perforations, which I'm obsessed.
obsessed with, and features insulation made of recycled materials, which the pullover didn't have, so I actually do like the jacket better. It's also nicely fitted, which makes it a great mid-layer, and the whole feel of the materials was very pleasant. It's similar to a Companion's Arcteryx jacket, which is a fair bit more expensive. Oh, and these Ombra's armless sunglasses? Uh, might be my new favorite sunnies. This is the brand new Viali style, which I am personally a big fan of. I got them complete with the side shields, which really helped to reduce the glare from the low sun in the desert, you know, in early spring. They were great, I loved them. Plus they were easy to put on and take off. And as a bonus, Ombras plants 20 trees for every pair sold, which technically makes them carbon negative. And you know I had on my beloved Tilly Modern Airflow hat, which I'm obsessed with, and on the opposite end of my person, a pair of Topo Athletic Pursuit 2 trail runners. I personally prefer trail runners to boots because they're more flexible, more breathable, and they're lighter and easier to move in. Plus, I tend to like zero drop shoes, and these are that. Usually I like to wear ultra lone peaks, but I wanted to give something similar a try. These after all are made of more recycled materials than the lone peak, which is a plus, and they still have that nice wide toe box, which is a must for me if I don't want to abuse my toes, which I don't. But the topos were a fair bit more stiff and supportive than the lone peaks, which might be a real draw for some people. Indeed, I did not hate these shoes. They required no breaking in, were comfortable, they just offered a bit more correction and support in the heels and arch than I personally like. Basically, they were farther from being a minimalist type shoe than I prefer when backpacking. But if you like a bit more support and heel cradling and a denser sole, then you're really gonna dig these. I do think they look slightly more like clown shoes and other wide toe box styles though, if I'm being totally honest. I felt a little silly walking through the airport with them. Like I was wearing old lady orthotic shoes or something, but that's me. The traction on trail was on point though, so zero complaints there. I was never worried about my footing. As for sleeping, I've reviewed the Gossamer Gear The One tent before, and you know it's my go-to solo tent when I'm flying with gear since it packs down so small, is super light, just over a pound, and pitches with trekking poles instead of tent poles. We'll put the full review in the description below for you. The sleeping pad I used was the Rab Ionosphere 5, also a little over a pound at 19.4 ounces, and it was really quite comfy and kept me warm from the ground up with its 4.8 R value. Plus, it came with an ultralight pump sack, which is always red. I was pleasantly surprised to find it wasn't super noisy either. It didn't crinkle obnoxiously when I rolled over or moved around in the middle of the night, and the self-proclaimed inflatable pad hater in the tent next to me also gave it a thumbs up because he didn't hear me moving around either, so that's a win. I paired my pad with the Rab Stratosphere inflatable pillow, which, though it's a little crinkly if not blown up all the way, might be my new favorite pillow. It packs up small, obviously, weighs only 95 grams, and the cover is stretchy and soft, so I'm, I'm a big fan. The same goes for the Thermarest Space Cowboy 45, which is about 1 pound 12 ounces and comes in three sizes, which is cool. Even though I was really pushing the limits of that temperature rating, I was not shiver level cold in the night, just a little chilly. But it could have been a lot worse if not for those very handy pad straps that kept me connected to the pad. It is a minimalist type bag for summer adventures. I mean, it doesn't have bells and whistles like an interior pocket or a zippered foot box or anything, but there are still small zipper baffles a cinchable hood and a square foot box, which is nice. Plus it's nice and light and super packable. And how about those 90-tastic colors, am I right? This is gonna be a great bag for a few trips I have in mind for this summer. And it's a small thing, but I also brought a Hydra Pack Flux bottle in addition to my hydration reservoir and Nalgene. It was great to have for holding electrolytes, but I also loved that on travel days it rolled up teeny tiny so it wasn't in the way. And I gotta say, I've tried a solid handful of collapsible bottles and I do not like most of them. But this one was easy to hold and drink out of, just squeeze or sip, and as long as I didn't have the filter attachment on, after I finished drinking it just sucked in there and returned to its normal size. So it was way more functional than a lot of other products on the market like it. But that's it guys, all in all some great gear for spring. But before you check out you should definitely like and subscribe, then get out there and wander on. Follow us 
on all the socials. You can also find us on terradrift.com if you want to read and watch some more of our rad gear review videos. They're all excellent. Maybe a how-to here or there. One of these has got to be a how-to, right?